Ladies and gentlemen, come gather in, come gather in, come gather all around. Today, it's the dead of winter up here in Canada, and what better time than to do a little bit of maintenance that we don't normally do, cleaning fuel injectors. We're gonna do that today on my little Korean suppository. Now, you've probably used a bunch of injector cleaners that come for the tank, and they come in a variety of different brands, labels, types. You just pour a little bit in the gas tank and give her, and they work, generally. Um, it used to be back in the bad old days when I started pulling wrenches back when the Dead Sea was only sick that uh, you'd put a little bit of injector cleaner in all the time and your little vehicle would be a lot happier. And then there was another way of cleaning injectors which would hook up a crazy machine to the fuel system and burn off a nasty injector cleaner that would stink up the entire freaking shop and it wasn't pleasant. Well I got me one of them machines so we're gonna have a go and try it out on this little turd over here. Woo! Let's go! So I picked up a fuel injection cleaner kit by Vivor. There's probably other companies. This is the one I got. Inside, it looks like this. It's a pretty thorough kit. Comes with everything you think you're gonna need for connecting to various fuel lines all over the place. Things don't seem to stay in here as uh, tidily as I would like. I'd kind of prefer a, a better grabbing kind of system in here but it does hold it all together. When this thing arrived in the mail, it was, it was kind of like sounded like a Christmas present full of Lego and it's, it was kind of interesting, but I figured out by looking online where everything should theoretically go, probably doesn't really matter. I think they probably could use a little bit better love in making these stay where they're supposed to go. The main heart of this bad boy is this guy right here, where you hook up your elixir of magical goodness, hook this to whatever fuel adapter you need, and then put compressed air into here. And you wanna have compressed air push the fluid into your engine. And you wanna run your engine off of the juice that you put in here. Um, this has been a bit of a challenge to find. Uh, and I tried a couple different cleaners that are looking pretty good. The only one I could find in my auto parts store that looks like it work is this. I'm not sponsored by Seafoam but I wouldn't mind being sponsored by Seafoam. <coughs> Just saying. This was the only one that was in my auto parts store that says in the instructions that you can use this on this type of cleaner if you mix it 50-50 with uh, gasoline. So we're gonna try that today and see how it goes because if that works, you can get this anywhere. And I've used this in the gas tank. I've used it in the oil to help clean the engine, and I've used this pouring it down the intake system to try to free up rings and valves and stuff. I do find it works. I'm not a big a believer in rebuild in a can, but this does make your vehicle different, hopefully better. So we're gonna run this 50-50 with gasoline. I'm shaking. So part of the reduce, reuse, and recycle, I'm gonna reuse this container right here. Um, I've washed it out with lacquer thinner to dissolve the type F transmission fluid that was in there, so it's clean. And I've got gradients on here, so I can pour the elixir of love in through there and mix it reasonably. I know that container can hold almost a liter, it's probably a quart, um, so I'm just gonna put in half a quart of the seafoam cleaner, and I can just measure it on here, that's just convenient. Should be one pint, actually. I'm gonna top it up with some gasoline. So I bought this car a couple weeks ago. I haven't really done this maintenance on it before, so we're gonna see how it goes. <clears throat> it was a fairly well-maintained car, so I don't imagine that it'll make a big difference. But I may run this stuff through my wife's car, which wasn't well-maintained, and we'll see how that goes. This appears to be a returnless fuel system. We've got an injector down there. We're gonna have an injector down there. These are the wires for it. That's likely an accumulator to absorb any fluctuations of fuel pressure. And this system doesn't have a return. It appears to be returnless, which is actually good for this type of a cleaner. Cause I'm gonna go in here and get these nuts undone. There's two of them and the fuel feed is in there. And then I'm gonna find an adapter that should be able to fit right on top of that and then we can feed all the fuel right into that rail and run the engine off our elixir of juice. So take me a moment to get set up for that. One of the things you need to do is get, make sure there's no fuel in the system when you take this apart. So in here, there is a fuel pump relay right there, which I've marked by undusting it, or dusting it. I'm gonna run the engine, pull that out, and the engine should quit by that being removed. Here we go. 
Oh, and it's stuck too. Uh, 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 uh. Probably never been removed. There we go. No, we don't. Uh, hold it, Kurt. I'm immediately going to regret this. So that should shut off the fuel pump. <clears throat> now we're out of fuel. I'm going to leave this out for now because I don't want it to uh, turn on the fuel pump. So to make it a little bit easier for you to see, I disconnected the PCV fresh air line and the inlet tube for the throttle body. And then it's just a little bit easier to get my big mitts in there and so you can see a little bit better. So we just pull this out. It's got a little O-ring on here, two nuts on studs. This is the matching fitting in the kit. So you can see that, that's the matching one in the kit. The cleaner is going to plug onto that. This is going to plug into the system and we put the nuts on to hold it all together. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there so it's not a problem. So this adapter is going to be plugged into the fuel rail like so. The O-ring will seal it. I'm going to put the nuts back on just snug, then we'll connect the uh, cleaner to that. When you drop the nuts, you can pick them up with a magnet under the vehicle, wherever they fall. In my case, they fell directly onto the ground, which is nice. They are held by a 10 millimeter, you need a 10 millimeter socket, which you will also drop and never find. So buy a couple of those. So that should hold it in. Probably doesn't have to be super tight, we just don't want it popping out. That's the only point of that. Snug, and you're just threading into plastic, so you don't need to kill it. All right, phase two. So the cleaner comes with this little uh, carabiner on it, which is good for hooking onto things. I'm just going to hook on to this spring because it's less likely to unhook and fall. And then the hose has this guy, which threads onto the adapter we just put onto the fuel line. There's a Teflon uh, seal in there, so it should do pretty good. So there's the fuel rail, there's the adapter we just put in, and then we thread it onto it with the hose that goes all the way up to our cleaning machine. We're going to fill that up with the juice. So this kit came with a little tiny funnel just for pouring stuff into here, which I immediately broke because I have a FOF, fear of funnels. And so now I get to wing it the old school way and try not to drip it all over the place. This is my mix of seafoam and gasoline. Notice how I'm holding the oil container so air can get in without the bloop, 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 bloop. Almost there. Stay on target. Has a blow off valve in case things get out of hand. Probably want to wear eye protection for this. Then we're going to hook a compressed air line up to here. And I'm going to set the pressure to about 50. which will probably work. So now I'm going to open this, run the vehicle, and burn off everything that's in here. And it'll run and run and run until it runs out, and then it'll quit. And then I'm going to change it all back and we'll see if it makes a difference. Um, if it doesn't make a difference, it isn't necessarily a problem of this. This car is fairly good shape and was reasonably well maintained, and I, I don't have any complaints with it. I'm just showing how to use it. <clears throat> we'll see. I may run this through my wife's Infinity, which is not as happy. This is pretty happy. So I am going to run the exhaust fans because uh, the natural flow of fumes in this room goes from the doors, even if they're open, through the shop and then exit out the hallway into the rest of the school. So uh, I'm going to run the fans so people don't complain. Again.
is actually running a lot better than the other stuff I've run with fuel. So far, I'm impressed. This works well. You just let it idle. Don't rev it up. We want it nice and slow and low. That is the tempo. One of the things that can help you decide whether you should clean your injectors or not is to look at the long-term fuel trim. Long-term fuel trim down here at the bottom is kind of what the computer's been doing to correct the fuel system over the long haul. And in this case, it's been adding about 4.7% fuel for, well, since I last reconnected the battery. Um, so it's been adding some fuel. So it could be if the injectors aren't flowing very well, it needs to add more fuel to get the right amount of fuel that it would have been getting had the injectors been actually flowing properly. So it's possible we can reduce this. 4.7 is not bad, um, but we're gonna see over time. I may check back and see if there's any progress, any difference on this. Short term's kinda all over the place. Uh, mostly it's trying to pull out fuel, which I guess makes sense, because if long term we got 4.7 being added and right now it's like, oh my gosh, let's cut some of that fuel out of there. Short term, short term is, is like the right freaking now. That's the ADHD of fuel management. A long term is like not ADHD. So we're gonna see if that improves over time. When I first tested this unit on that machine, which is a 350 V8, and when I ran it on this machine, which is a 302 V8, man, that thing went through the cleaner and the fuel quickly. Interestingly, at 7.6 liters per 100 kilometer, and I have no idea how much is still in there, it's been running so long now, I'm thinking, did I, did I actually disconnect the fuel? Fuel relay is still here. Fuel line still disconnected. Well, like 45 minutes, still running on a liter of fuel. Holy crap. Now I gotta change the battery on the camera. All right, so that took a while. Now we just gotta disconnect everything. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm getting myself into, so I'm gonna shut the fuel line off of here. Uh, probably gonna disconnect this hose. And then I'm gonna get in here and disconnect that fuel line. Should be dry. So you can't see it very well in here. It's leading off the air pressure that's trapped in the line. All right, so that's disconnected. I'm gonna take out that adapter and put the original fuel line back in. Ran nice. I would say the sea foam worked well for doing this. A little bit of juice is still leaking out on my fingers. With a bunch of wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. Adapter comes out. I'm gonna wipe that off a little bit later on. Then I'll put the fuel line back in. And then nobody knows that we were in there. Except it should run better, we hope. Toy, it doesn't have to be super tight on this car because it seals by the O-ring. And these bolt, bolts don't uh, tighten an O-ring. They just hold it in so it doesn't fall out. All right, and we're gonna put the fuel pump relay back in and close this up. And take this down. So before all of this, I experimented with the two shop cars, but at this point, I'm trusting the machine enough that I did this on my own car and my wife's Infinity. This one wasn't quite as nicely maintained, but we can still go at it. Here's the fuel 
fuel pump fuse, which is a bit harder to get to. But you can find it. The fuse box at the kit panel inside has a fuse puller out and aider. You can just jam it in there, pull out that fuse, and the engine runs out of fuel and quits. There it is quitting. It still has the fans going, but it's, it's still the dead of winter here. I went and put a thinner O-ring on there. There we are, that's happier. And this fit fairly well. I did the same thing, 50-50 seafoam and gasoline, and uh, tried her all out. It was pretty much the same as before. It's also a returnless system, so uh, fairly easy to use. Happiest at 50 PSI. <coughs> no leaks. No fuel coming out. <coughs> and we just run it. This is actually how loud it is. It's not very loud, I really like it. Okay, it's just started, it's just started misfiring. You can hear the putt, 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 putt from the exhaust. <clears throat> so I imagine it should quit pretty soon. Okay. I tell you, the more modern vehicles get, the less I want to work on them. They're, everything's got covers, everything's jammed into place, there's so many extra things. I mean, way back in the 70s, you could just climb into the engine compartment and work away right there. Hopefully nobody closes the hood on you. This one, it's like a secret hidden compartment that you've got to find the fuse box in and knock three times and say, Huey sent you. And we'll put everything back in the case. If you're a student using this in my shop, put everything back in the case so we can find it. Doesn't help if you leave stuff lying around, then nobody else can use it because the parts are missing. Life lesson here, if your toolbox is organized, if you keep yourself organized, you will work faster. As a mechanic, you need to know where your tools are so you can grab them in a hurry and get the job done quick. The quicker you are, the more money you make. So keep this organized. A couple seconds to put it in the right place can speed you up. If you're putting this on a vehicle that has a return system, you're gonna not want to put this higher than the return pressure to the tank. So if the fuel pressure regulator is set to be like 50 PSI, you wanna put in 45 PSI so you don't just send this to the gas tank. Uh, if the line pressure is 63, run like 58, about five pounds, whatever it'll run on. Because we want the engine to burn this. If you can't, for whatever reason, play with that, this comes in the kit and I believe what it's designed to do is pinch closed the return so that you can't send it back to the tank. It's an option. It's a way of dealing with that so you make sure the engine only deals with this pressure. So that's in there. This system didn't have a return line, so it doesn't matter. With all that back together, one last look, make sure nothing's missing, and then we can go put this back in the tool room. Woohoo! Almost. We have to be in there. Not and tremendously happy with the case, I'll be honest. Might have mentioned that. Might have mentioned that. So that's the Vivor fuel injection cleaner. You put this back in the tool room so other people can use it. So we learned how to hook up and connect the fuel injection cleaner from Vivor into my Hyundai Accent, the angry accent. We use an old oil container to mix up some sea foam 50-50 with gasoline. We ran it through the machine. It actually took a fiendishly long time, which tells me that gets good fuel economy. And we also took a peek at the long-term fuel trims and before and after to see if we had a difference in there. This vehicle wasn't having any issues, but it's certainly a good experience. And 
you know, if you're trying to narrow down a drivability problem, sometimes cleaning the injectors makes it worthwhile. At any rate, there we are. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for watching. Take care.